Hello, I'm Martin Edmondson, the founder of Reflections, the creative director of Driver San Francisco, and you're watching Platform 32. I recently got an invite to the Ubisoft Summer Seaside Spectacular, so I quickly packed my bucket and spade, put on my best speedos and skipped along to the event in sunny London. Ubisoft took the opportunity to show off some of its biggest upcoming games, and I managed to grab a couple of really high profile interviews about games I think you guys should be getting really excited about, starting with Driver San Francisco. San Francisco is the fifth game in the Driver series, with the first game being released way back in 1999. It was a game changer and the never seen before 3D open world environment was an exciting new way for driving games to be played. The cops and robbers chase modes blew my tiny little 20 year old mind. It was a game that was on constantly during house parties of old and the pass the pad action created some great gaming memories for me. The sequel Driver 2 was again a massive success, but you could say the series went a bit downhill when the 2004 release of Driver 3, or Drive 3 er, to give it its proper title, but that wouldn't necessarily be true. To be honest, Drive er, 3 er, for, er, was so phenomenally bad, it drove the series head on into a brick wall with a full tank of petrol and blew the franchise to smithereens. Kablooey! So when I heard that the latest instalment to the series, Driver San Francisco, was aiming to bring the gameplay experience back to the old school thrills of the stunning original, I had to know more. I asked Martin Edmondson, the creative director of Driver San Francisco and the designer of the first Driver game, what aspects from the original were being brought to San Francisco and what new features were being included in an effort to put the Driver franchise back into pole position. Uh, the first characters, Tanner, Jericho, Jones, they're all back. And uh, also some of the features like the film directors, so we brought those back as well. So lots there for fans of the original game to really get stuck into. Uh, but what we also try to do is really innovate in the game. Reflection's always been a very innovative uh, company, all the way back to our uh, Shadow of the Beast games and the uh, Stuntman Destruction Derby and the original driver as well, of course. Um, and what we've done here is bring a brand new feature called Shift. It's the ability for the player to instantaneously, rapidly shift between vehicles uh, with no loading, no delays whatsoever. And it's a real game changer for the uh, driving genre. In fact, uh, we've got the multiplayer around the corner there and uh, we have a game running called Tag, uh, which you really have to have a, a, a play on. You've never played anything like uh, Driver San Francisco multiplayer. And I certainly did have a go on Tag. In fact, I had quite a few goes. And I have to say, it was a gaming equivalent of Haribo Tang Fastix totally Moorish. It was a very exciting game mode which had many of us perched on the edge of our seats, with near misses and tag stealing really getting the adrenaline pumping. The shift feature is, as Martin said, completely unique. The best comparison I could give would be the highway chase scene in The Matrix Reloaded, where some of the agents possess police officers in their patrol car so they can give chase, or where the twins turn all ghostly and, and float to and from different cars. But that's a rubbish comparison. Let's just let Martin tell us more. He explains it so much better than me. Uh, well, the shift mechanic is at its uh, 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 at its most you know sort of functional level is uh, very very simple. You press X or A, and you're into shift. You use the twin analog sticks to control it whilst you're in the air, and you select a car, find a car that you want, press X or A, and you're back into a new car. You can do it as quickly, as rapidly, as often as you want in the game. Um, and the way that we work in uh, single player is that we've deeply ingrained that into the story of the game. So the story and the uh, shift feature are deeply entwined. And uh, actually right from the very beginning of the development of the game, uh, we, we built this feature into the game and into the story as well. And so what happens is Tanner is, uh, gets himself into a situation where he thinks he has this ability, but in fact as you quickly discover, and Tanner quickly discovers, there's uh, a lot more to it than meets the eye. More than meets the eye? You, you mean his car's a transformer? Ugh. Nah, not really. There is actually quite a clever plot device in place to make the use of shift fit into the storyline of the campaign. But what is it? Hmm? Well, Tanner, the hero of the game, is actually in a coma. That's right, after a horrific crash, Tanner has an out-of-body experience which lets him leave his battered and broken body in the hospital and float around the streets of San Francisco inhabiting the bodies of other drivers at will. Spooky, weird and totally far-fetched, but it really does work well and is something you definitely need to try for yourself to get a sense of how cool it actually is. 
Now, tag mode was the only multiplayer action I got to grips with at the event, but as Martin is about to explain, there are many more modes to look forward to. We actually have 11 uh, multiplayer modes here today. We've, uh, we're showing, mainly we're showing uh, tag just because it's the, the most simple one to demonstrate. Uh, the point of tag is a uh, very, uh, very uh, simple game. You, uh, if you have the tag, you're scoring. You score one point per second, roughly. And first player to 100 points wins. Um, anybody rams you when you've got the tag, you lose the tag. You ram them to get the tag back. Lots of shifting around, grabbing cars, uh, full-on uh, oncoming traffic, trying to take them out and get that tag back. We also have uh, capture the flag here today, uh, standard capture the flag mechanic, but it works really it's really unique. You wouldn't normally associate a capture the flag game with a, a driving game, but with a shift feature, we're really able to do some quite experimental things that work very well with this feature. So we have that. We also have uh, standard races today as well, uh, cop chases as well, and uh, base defense games. Two, uh, two teams, one base, uh, sorry, one team defending, one team attacking. One hit takes them out. They're all flying around trying to send cars in like uh, missiles, basically, and and one team is trying to defend, so we have a whole range of uh, different games here. Wow, so many game modes, and with each sounding like a completely different experience from the last, it looks like multiplayer in Driver San Francisco is going to be the driving equivalent of a Call of Duty game, concentrating on addictive, fast-paced arcade action rather than the generic three-lap races which feature in most vehicle-based games. Now, as a driving game is not complete without the actual driving, I asked Martin to fill us in on the types of vehicles we will be getting behind the steering wheels of, and more importantly, how they handle. Yeah, we have uh, 130 real licensed cars, first time we've ever done that in a driving game, all fully destructible, and all chosen for their sort of iconic status. So we have the obvious exotic Lamborghini kind of things, but we've really focused on cars that are iconic, and by that we mean iconic in the movies. So think of a very famous, uh, movie car chase and the chances are that that vehicle is in the game and uh, and uh, as I said all fully destructible and we have a handling model strongly based on physics all the way back to our previous games like Destruction Derby and Driver we have a very uh, classic feel it's uh, quite unique to Driver actually and we've worked very hard to get that feeling back those big tail out slides a soft soaky suspension spinning tires burning rubber as I said it's just a classic Hollywood movie car chase feel awesome Thanks, Martin. But before I let you shift into the driver's seat of a Shelby GT500 and burn rubber into the sunset, could you fill the P32 viewers in on when they will be able to play the game? Driver San Francisco comes out on the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, PC and Mac, and it's out the very beginning of September. Ooh, not long to wait then, gamers. Now, I do have to admit that when I first heard about Driver San Francisco, I wasn't too bothered about it. It's not that I thought it would be bad, it's just it didn't really tickle my interests. Having had the chance to play a section of the single-player campaign, experience the multiplayer, and try out the shift feature, I have to say I'm now pretty excited about it. There hasn't really been a fun, action-packed racing game out for a while now, and I really think Driver San Francisco will hit the spot not only for the driving fans out there, but also the fans of action games too. Roll on September! Remember to stay tuned to Platform 32 for the second part of our Ubisoft Summer Seaside Spectacular feature. It's coming very soon and it's all about Far Cry 3.